Hello everyone, it's Yin Tan here, and welcome to my latest video. Now if you're an eagle-eyed viewer who keeps a keen track of my schedule, you might be surprised to see this video go up, as typically on Mondays I try and do a video that's based around one of my articles, and if you've checked INN, I haven't actually put out an article today. And that's not because I haven't worked on anything, don't worry, you've got an article to look forward to, uh, it's just based around an interview that I did, and because I'm not a dick, um, I want to make sure that what I've quoted someone saying is fine with them being out there, basically. And uh, in the absence of that, I kind of wanted to make a short video here on a topic that I touched on on Twitter earlier today, which is, you know, why do so many people who go to the CSM, people who end up getting elected and serving a full year or more on the council, end up quitting the game? And that specific aspect, why do people quit after they finish the CSM, is all I'm going to be looking at here. I could probably go into a lot of detail about why being a member of the CSM actually kind of sucks, um, but that's something that should probably be saved for its own thing. So if you want to see like an anti-advert for the CSM, uh, you know, let me know in the comments if that's something you think could be interesting, because I definitely think it could be. But my first reaction to all of this was just to make a quick Google Doc, and I've got it up here, uh, of all the people who I was on the CSM with, just to try and see where they are now, so that I could get my own data. Because you don't just want to believe the general consensus that being on the CSM makes you more likely to quit. What I wanted to do was to be like, okay, here's some concrete examples from things I know. So, over my three years on the council, I was able to work with 20 other members of the CSM. Uh, technically, it is 21 because Vince Strachan was elected, but he did nothing when he was on the CSM and was removed for an activity, so I don't count him on that list. But of those 20 people, five of them just straight up quit the game. Uh, Mr. Hyde, uh, Kyle Apathos, Nash Cadaver, Bobmon, and Noobman. And then on top of that, um, there are three people who I think had kind of re very reduced activity after getting off the CSM, and that's Gorski Carr, Faefer, and Reload. Uh, you can argue the, the latter three, but you know, it's my list, I'll do what I want. So that means that eight people out of that 20 no longer play the game to any, I would say, significant degree. And that means that there's a 40% mortality rate after you quit the CSM. And that's not even including the fact that five of the people on that list are still members of the CSM. So I think that goes some way to really prove that the CSM-itis problem, as a couple of people have called it, is a real thing. Like, it's not uh, an observational bias that people have. Now, there probably is an argument that maybe the people who join the CSM are older players and therefore they're going to quit the game eventually, therefore it's just a coincidence that they happen to quit after they leave the CSM. But I just, I personally, having met these people, I don't see them thinking of the CSM as winding down their EVE careers. That's not the impression that I got from a lot of these people. I think the only person that really applied to is Nash, because he went on to go and do bigger and better things in real life. But for everyone else, I, I, the, either the CSM itself or something after the CSM made them not want to play the game anymore. Unfortunately for us though, that is where the hard data ends. I can't read minds and I didn't go back and uh, try and interview all these people who quit the game because for the vast majority of them it's actually kind of hard to uh, get a hold of them anymore. Um, but yeah, we do have one other thing which is my own personal experience as an ex-member of the CSM. And, you know, as someone who did definitely consider quitting, and in fact I considered new manning out and getting myself deliberately banned so that I wouldn't have to play this game anymore uh, right near the end of it. But that's not a story we're going to go into. Uh, but I think that that does show that everyone is susceptible to the idea of quitting after they get off of the CSM. And I think there's three main reasons for that. So this first point is very subjective, and I guess all of these are going to be subjective because they're based on my personal experiences, but this one more than the others, and it's the one that actually really hit me personally the hardest, and that is just the sheer feeling of helplessness that can really get to you, um, you know, after you leave the CSM. And I know, a lot, I know a lot of people really want to paint the CSM as just self-interested space politicians who are in it for their tribe and nothing else. But the vast majority of people who I've talked to on the CSM, they, they don't see it like that. They want to, you know, sit there and help make the game better. They want to have those high-level discussions with CCP and really help them to understand the game and, you know, help them to develop the game in a positive direction. 
And I think that's really greatly summed up in a quote that someone once said to me, which was, uh, keeping Eve Eve is the highest level of the metagame. And what's meant by that is that, you know, when you're on the CSM, you aren't going to be just impacting yourself. You aren't just going to be impacting your corporation. You aren't just going to be impacting the people you're at war with. You're impacting the entire community, the entire game. You know, you are, you don't have much say in things, but you are there to present the opinions and, uh, you know, feedback of the player base. You're there to represent them to CCP, and you're there to try and guide, you know, the development of EVE Online in a positive direction. And then when you get off the CSM, suddenly you just don't have even a voice in that conversation anymore for a lot of people. Like, you're just going to disappear back into obscurity, and I can really understand why that's hard. Like, I have, you know, this fairly big channel, I've got articles on INN, I still have some amount of voice, I would like to think, in terms of being able to converse with CCP about the state of the game. But it's not the same, and that can be very hard to adjust to, because you've got to look at all these changes, and you've just got to accept them and think, okay, I hope that this works. I hope that the CSM is working on giving feedback to CCP on this. I hope things are in development, but you just don't know uh, because CCP is just awful at communicating. And that can that can really wreck you. That can make you just not want to play a game anymore. And that's something that's really compounded by the second point as well, which is just a general loss of faith in CCP. And you know, I don't think anyone goes onto the CSM thinking that, oh, CCP is going to be the best games company in the world, they're amazing, you know, I, I love everything about them, they're going to be so well organised. No, CCP is a very unique company and they make a very unique product in even line. But you do get the impression that they could do anything with that product. You know, there is this sense of... Um, freedom that EVE Online very deliberately gives to you, and you assume that that is the same on the other side of the fence, that EVE could become anything, and that's just not the reality of things. Like, you get on board, and you see how the decisions are made, you see um, the atrocious nature of CCP's long-term planning. You know, I think the Chaos Era, for example, is really in indicative of that lack of long-term planning. Like, I don't hate the majority of the changes that have come from the Chaos Era, but if you have to be making radical changes every single week so that your game doesn't die, that indicates to me that you have not managed your game properly in terms of planning and execution of features uh, in the long term. But it's not just those bigger picture things that will really shake your confidence. It's also just these tiny little things. Like, I very vividly remember a conversation I had with a dev, um, and it only took like 15 minutes, but it was just me and them going back and forth about whether or not you could use a command destroyer to jump a heavy interdictor. And I ended up having to like ask a couple of people because the conversation went on for so long that I started to doubt myself. And turns out, yeah, you actually just can jump a hick with a with its bubble up with a command destroyer. And the guy who I was talking to just didn't know that. And it's just tiny little things like that that will make you realize that CCP isn't as well educated about the game as the people who play it and that just I don't, I don't want to say it's a bad look but it's something that will make you question every decision CCP made and try and look at what CCP is trying to achieve with the change rather than what the change will actually achieve and I think that second guessing CCP like that is something that's just going to inevitably make you kind of bitter because you're always going to just see the worst reasons to make a change and then I guess there's the final point, which is just that being a member of the CSM forces you to come to grips with the mortality of EVE Online, with the fact that EVE Online might not be here in a year or five years. And that's not me saying EVE is dying or EVE's gonna die or the sky is falling, but as a CSM member, your job is to look at the long-term impacts of changes that CCP is proposing and evaluate whether or not they'll be healthy for the game. And in order to do that, you have to understand that EVE Online is not a permanent thing. EVE Online could go away if we don't manage it properly. And that is something that will weigh on you. You know, EVE is a game where you have to be able to look two to three years in the future if you want to be really good at it. You have to plan, you have to think about stuff. And when you know, when you have that knowledge that you can't unlearn, that EVE Online might not be here in five years, you, you it, it kind of saps your will to go out and do things that are impressive. And if 
doing things that are impressive is what keeps you in the game, then that's inevitably going to lead to you quitting. And it's not even like that existential threat is something that's far from your mind as a CSM member. I mean, I don't think I've been on a single term where uh, we didn't at least at one point all look at each other and think this could kill the game. And maybe that is an overreaction, but those features that we said that about never got implemented, so we don't really know. Um, and I guess that's where it all cycles right back around to helplessness, because you can't help but feel that one of these days something's going to slip through the cracks and uh, it's going to kill the game. And if that's the way EVE Online is going to be, then kind of what's the point in playing it to some extent? And that's what I meant when I talked about me not being excited about the future of EVE Online in that tweet. It's not that I don't think CCP might do cool stuff. I think CCP will probably still do cool stuff. It's just you can't you can't put the same faith into the future of EVE Online after being on the CSM than you could uh, before you were on the CSM. And then piling on top of all that is just the sheer amount of burnout that you're probably going to be feeling after a year on the CSM. Because it can be, you know, the CSM can be as much work as you want to make it, but you're probably going to be spending at least 100 to 200 hours working on the CSM over the year. And you're going to be spending two weeks of holiday where you'll be doing nothing but being in meetings with uh, people talking about EVE. And I think after all that, you know, I, it's probably not right to question your desire to take a break from the game. It's just a shame that uh, some people just don't come back after those breaks. Alright, well I hope that those cold hard truths haven't depressed you too much, but thank you very much for listening, and until next time, fly safe. And remember, friends don't let friends run for the CSM. <laughs>